In this tip, I'm going to show you how if you've got two different sounds, two different loops, two different bits of audio, and you want to crossfade them, you want to bring them together, how do you avoid getting those clicks and pops in between them? If you've ever brought two sounds together and you wanted to sort of comp some vocals, so combine two vocal takes or get two guitar loops and make them play nicely together, you may have noticed that sometimes you get a click, a pop, a glitch, a bit of distortion in between them. There's a couple of simple tips and I'm going to show you those here to help you avoid it. Now, to show this, I've got my track here. This is a vocal for We Will Rise Together that I did recently. So I've got two takes. I've got take one and take two, even though they're labeled the same if we hit play. The future is not now, we face it all alone. So there are two different takes here. Now, what if I wanted to bring these two together and select part of one and part of another? Well, let's just create a little bit of a scenario here, shall we? Let's split this one out here and we'll split this one here. And then we'll go to the end and we'll get to this section, and why don't we go all the way down here, and we'll split it here. So let's just say we've got these, and you can see that they're very similar, but there's some differences here, and if, uh, well, I don't need to do that twice, do I? There we go. So we've got two bits of audio here. What if I wanted to say halfway through this part, right there, I wanted to split this out and use the second half of the second one? Well, I can do that pretty easily, right? I split it here, boom. I tap here, I split it here, boom. And if we bring these down onto a third track, let's say we wanted the first section to come from here, we just drag that down, and the second section to come from here, we drag that down. So now if we solo this one, this will actually bring these two together. Let's see what sort of job it's done bringing these two parts together. Future is not now. We face it all alone. Did you hear it? Did you hear the pop? Did you hear the pop? So yeah, so between here, we'll just turn this up so you can really hear it. Just listen for that little click and pop that we get in between there. All alone. All alone. Why is that? Well, it's because you're getting a little piece of one bit of audio and a little piece of the other. Now, the easiest way to do this is to try and do your split where there's no audio, right? Because this is happening because two tracks, two bits of audio are playing, one comes and it suddenly goes out and the other one suddenly starts. So the easiest way to do this is, because we've got non-destructive editing, we can grab this one and you can actually maneuver these around and find the location where there's a gap. So instead of doing it right there, if I do it here instead, and if this one finishes there, what we should find is we get a lessening of that pop. All alone. No, we actually got a worse pop. So this could be a case where we actually need to use a second method. Now, the first thing I would say about this is if you can avoid doing this mid phrase entirely, that's your best bet. So if I took this back to here, for instance, I know that we've got a bigger gap there. So anytime you can do your fade, do your crossover where there is no sound, that's going to work better. Take a listen to this and you'll see what I mean. We face it all alone. No pop at all, right? Because the cut, the split there, is between two areas where there is zero noise. There's nothing going on there, so you get no click and pop. Face it all alone. So if you can do that, do it at a point where there is none. If you really desperately want to, let's just say you've got two guitar loops and you want to really bring them together, and you've played around with this, you can't get rid of the click and the pop, you've done all the little shimmying here, and it won't work because you still get this. All alone. What can you do? We well, can do a crossfade. So here in uh, in GarageBand, to do a crossfade, we do need a second track because we can't crossfade. Some DAWs will let you fade out one clip and fade in a second clip at the same time. GarageBand doesn't let you do that, but there's an easy workaround, and that is we duplicate out this track, we grab this one and bring it down onto our next track. Now what we need to do is use automation. So let's solo both of these. So again, if we just play these now, it's going to do the exact same thing. Yet. It all alone. Still getting that pop. The reason we're getting that pop is that the volume is going from high there to high there. So what do we do? We tap on this button, we go automation. And what we're going to do is tap in the top right here, slide that one across, and we're going to add some automation points right here at the end. You need to zoom right in, so spread your fingers apart to zoom right in. Tap there, tap there again. Bring this one down. So you want the volume to go to zero there, and you want to bring this across so it's just there, just before it hits the end, whoop, don't do that, <laughs> just before it hits the end, it's dropping it down. Now what else do you want to do? Well, of course you want to do the exact opposite on this track. So you want this one's volume to be starting low and actually coming up. So if we bring this one here, uh, we want it to be there, and we want it to start down here, 
and then come in. Now, is this going to sound perfect? No. Is it going to take a lot of playing around to get it sounding okay? Yes. And are you better off doing the split like I showed you in the first method? Absolutely. But if you've got no choice or you're using loops or you're using something else, this can actually work well. So let's play this now and see how well I've done just off the bat here. We'll hit space. It's not known. We faced it all alone. Yeah, no so good. Much right, so I haven't, it's still got that click there, still got the pop there, so I think that's because I haven't, uh, this one's still coming in. Oh, it turns the wrong one. This one's still coming in too soon. So we just need to spread that one out a little bit. And now let's just see if this is going to work for us. We hit spacebar. It all alone. Yeah, so that's removed it, yeah, but now you have that too much of a volume dip. So this is why I'm saying you do need to use some trial and error. You need to try and get it soft enough, but quick enough to actually fix it completely. So if we bring this one, we just need to bring it up a bit faster, like that. Uh, let's try it one more time. All alone. Now the click's back. So you can see how fiddly it can get, but that is the way that you want to do it. And if you're using something like a drum loop, or if you're using this, and the thing is, if you've got this with your backing track, even if you do the version where it's kind of does that bit of variation, alone. you don't notice it as much once you bring it back into the mix. So let's bring this back in with the backing track. Just turn the volume down, because it's going to get awfully loud now. Um, All alone. Sorry, it had, uh, it had the second vocal in there, so it just sounded a bit weird. But take a listen. It all alone. So even though it does that volume dip, it's not sounding as bad. And again, if it's not your vocal, but it's your drum loop or your guitar loop or something else you're using there, then that can actually work. So there you go. That is the two ways that you can reduce any of those glitches, clicks, and pops between two bits of audio when you are blending them, mixing them together here in GarageBand iOS.